Um, next thing I want to say, congrats on 200,000 subscribers. I think, I don't believe last time you were on the cha- uh, on tour life, the pod, you had 200. That was kind of in the last, no, no, no. that was kind of yeah, in the last couple ago. months. Yeah. La- yeah. Just last right month. after Austin, uh, after Waco, right after Waco, Monday after Waco. Yeah. So congratulations. That's a huge milestone. I mean, you're 50,000 away from a quarter of a million, which is absolutely insane. Um, do you want to kind of go down memory lane a little bit and just kind of tell, you know, the listeners that like how the journey has gone? Well, um, I can just say the basics. I don't know how many times I've talked about this in podcasts, maybe never, maybe a couple of times, but I started YouTube with no goal of making money with it or building a hundred thousand plus member audience. And I think that is one of the main reasons I, first of all, still enjoy it. And uh, it happened to be so successful. The only reason I did YouTube was because I wanted to do it. And, and I think that is the best motivation for anything is just like, I didn't have to ever make myself, I have to go make a video. I mean, vlogmas sometimes became questionable um, when you feel like you're putting yourself in a position where you kind of have to do something that you not necessarily want to do every day. But um, YouTube has always been something that I very much enjoyed and wanted to do. And it was never about growing or making money with it at all. It was just about, this is what I want to do. And it just happened to be successful. But I think I would, I mean, I don't know if I'm just saying that, but it feels like I would also still be doing it if it was not successful. Mm. Like I just do it because I like it. Mm. So it's that's definitely my, easier. Uh, it, it definitely is easier because it's successful, but you're saying you would oh, still yeah. have the same well, passion to go out and film a video. What's the comparison Brody? When you, when you first started YouTube, what ours were your is, goals? Ours is very similar because when I first started YouTube, you actually couldn't make money. So I was back in the, in the, like right now, anyone that starts YouTube channel, you, uh, it's kind of changed over the years, but right now it's like a thousand subscribers and then like 4,000 watch time, I think. And then from there, every video you upload, you can start making money back when I did it. They, they actually reached out to you and um, they would say, oh, wow. Hey, this video that you just posted or that you posted a week ago or whatever is starting to get a lot of views. We want to monetize it. So it was like on a per video basis. It was very strange. And so I made dozens and dozens and dozens of tutorial videos and all this stuff and wasn't making any money. Um, and my whole thing was, I was kind of going about the route. I did enjoy doing it, but I was also one of the first people to do ultimate Frisbee content. So I was actually trying to get more people interested in, in ultimate. And also I went on and if you just search like how to throw a Frisbee, it was videos from like five, 10 years ago, like really far in the past. And they were terrible. They were giving terrible advice. They're doing all sorts of things that I would never tell anyone to do. So I was like, Hey, like with anything, if you're good at it, if you can figure it out, it's actually a lot more enjoyable than not being good at it. So I was like, let me start making videos. So that's how I started. Um, but Simon, what gave you, what gave you like the push to start doing YouTube? What, like at what point were you like, oh, Hey, I, I want to make my first YouTube video. I've always been in into content creating even before content creating was even a thing. So like when I was a young kid, one of my early, early Christmases that I remember, all I wanted for Christmas was like a little camcorder. Mm. Like back in the day where you had this little tape cassette that you put in that like actually like played the film on it. It's like the Home Alone, um, uh, the Home Alone video camera camcorder, I think, right? Yeah, some, some, like just old school stuff from yeah. like the late 1990s or early 2000s. Um, and I would make videos with my brothers or I would go to the skate park and make a little skate video. There was nowhere to post it or share it with anyone. I would just do it for myself and have my parents watch it or my friends. Um, so I was like into that kind of stuff. I joined a lot of music classes as well and did some music editing. So just like this whole being creative 
with music or video or even putting both together was just always a big part of my life. And then I've been a sucker for YouTube basically ever since the platform came out. I follow a lot of bigger YouTubers and I don't know, it was always something where I thought, man, maybe I could do this. Do you was there uh, like oh, ahead, was really. there like motivation from anybody who was doing content in disc golf that you looked at and were, and you were like okay I could I could do that as well or or did you consume any disc golf content at the time when you were like oh no I enjoy this I want to do it I'm trying to think like I started back in 2018 my YouTube channel and I was doing like disc golf style vlogs where I would throw in trick shots here and there, but mainly just go play courses, do like little course reviews, do like some tutorials, have like some friends, local people, just be guests on the channel. I would, I don't really remember seeing many people do that back then. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to say I started that thing because I don't think I did. I'm sure there were people who did it before me and maybe I saw people do it. Uh, I just don't remember right now. This yeah. probably wasn't like very wasn't mainstream much. either of where it's like no. getting passed around the whole disc golf community where everyone knew about, Oh, this YouTube channel. It was like Terry Miller, right? He was, he was the one doing a lot of the coverage. Mm. Yeah. Um, was Joe Mez he around video, then? He had, a, he had a video blog, blog as well. So he'd do like little vlogs here and there. Okay. Was Joe, Joe Mez wasn't around back then, right? They started later. Oh, they were. Well, they were doing just coverage, coverage. round coverage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there wasn't, there wasn't probably any big like creator that was making content back then on like a consistent basis. Were you making like vlogs be uh this is a silly question, but I don't remember the first vlogs that I ever saw about disc golf were actually Eagles vlogs. Was yep. he after you? Oh gosh. My brain is so <laughs> melted right now that I don't even remember Eagles. vlogs. of course Eagle was, uh, but I think Eagle kind of pioneered the disc golf vlog thing, oh. at least on the pro tour. I mean, even pre pro tour, he would do phone vlogs. He would do like tournament yeah. weekends and, I think, I think he started that around 2016. I could be off by a year, but I was also doing, if you go to my YouTube channel and scroll all the way to the first videos, I actually, I have a couple of videos like 2015, 2016, like before I actually took it seriously. Um, so it was also something that I was into early. I think 2014 is my very first video. Um, Do you know what the title, was, the title of that video? It might be, I was doing like a promo for the MD2, which was, was like a 10, new. It was, it was 10 years ago. Oh, you're looking at it right now? No, I already had it. That was going to be a question I was going to ask you. Oh, I'm you, not 100% you... sure what's the first one. I think it might be my MD2 promo. Yes. Dismania C-Line MD2 promo. That's actually a really good video <laughs> <You're>, that's, <laughs> hey that's something that's impressive saying your first video is really good i don't know what my first video was but i bet it was complete trash it takes i mean a, if a you most... watch that video uh, it's terrible i mean you look you can, you can see it's made on imovie <laughs> with all the tacky weird little uh, transitions <laughs> and the weird music effects like it's not good, but you can already like even ten years ago, you can like pinpoint my style that I was already like kind of like mm -hmm. finding then, which was like just kind of like trying to throw aces and doing making really hard things look casual. I, I I always was like a big fan of that style. Like I would never like Brody, your style was to like make something really cool and then like celebrate like crazy. Mm -hmm. My style was more the do something cool and act like it's normal. Yeah, I went, what you said was the exact opposite. Those are my least favorite trick shots is doing something that's really hard and make that looks easy. There was a, a good example would be, um, there was like a, uh, a mailbox thing that people would like, you know, throw their mail into. And it was a slit that was like maybe just a little bit bigger than a Frisbee. So it was a hundred percent feasible. The problem was for what, for a Frisbee to go in that you had to be somewhat close to it and being, you know, 20 feet away and throwing it into that slit is not very easy at, at, at all, at all. It's very, very difficult. The problem is if you do it though, it doesn't really look that hard. And so I was yeah. always trying to do stuff that I can consistently do 
but other people would look at it and be like, holy cow, how did he do that? When in fact, it wasn't that hard that I did. It just, like you said, I just did something that kind of looked cool. Um, so we, we went about different ways. One thing I actually do really respect from you too, is you always kept the editing. And I don't know if that's still the case now, cause you're, you might be a little bit busier being a father, but you, for the longest times, like you were still editing your videos. And I think a lot of times YouTubers try to grow really fast so they can start passing that along to someone else. And then you can kind of see a change in their videos because you're, you do kind of the vlog style. And I think with that, you can really tell when another editor kind of touches it because you're not able to be like, Oh, this, I said this, this, I want to put an emphasis on this. Um, do you still edit your stuff now? Every single time. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. It's, it's, it's tough to do. Um, it definitely is tough to do. Uh, another question I, I had, it. I would never give that away. Yeah. You some know, people, I hate that's, editing. That's crazy. Cause when I started mine, I did all mine. And then I ha I had a guy who then did them after that for a couple of years. And then now I do all mine again. And I like it way more than handing it off. Mm. I can do it quicker, the handoff and then the time frame of doing that. And then that person editing took a long, it was like a longer process. It was like a couple day process. And now Ooh. I can get it done in like 20 Yuli, minutes or something. Yuli, you're an editing ninja. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, but I, when I went to Vlogmas last year to Yuli's house and he would film a vlog and he would just like go to his little couch on his phone for a second. And like two minutes later, he'd be like, okay, done post. I was like, what? Like I get like well, locked in like an hour, two hours. I need everything to be just how I want it. And that, usually it's just a bit more straightforward. Yeah. That's something that I don't want to do, which I did on my first ones ever. I would be like, oh no, that's wrong. And I'd get really um, technical with it. And now like, I feel like, some there's going to be some people who definitely see the flaws and they're definitely like, Ooh, this is kind of trash. But for the most part, the people, the consumer, I feel like is just trying to see what, what, like what's going on. This is what I want to watch. Let me see it and get on to more content. You know, let me consume some more stuff. I feel like that would be the most or the more majority. And that's what I try to think because I do know that like he said, I get through it really quick. I don't add any extra little things. I'm just like clip, 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 pull them together and send it on its way type thing. But that's also a style. You know what I mean? Like, um, I've never done like vlogs until this last, this year, I started doing this thing called the Yuli report, which is just me and like AB and, and like what my week's like, like, that's all it is. Because I, one thing that I do not like that I can't stand is editing rounds. I just don't like it. Like I don't enjoy editing them. It's quick and I can do it fast, but the process of filming it, editing it, and then shipping it out there, even though people love it, I can't stand it. And so I, I was like, this is why my YouTube channel took a big time hit. Like for a year, I didn't do anything. And it was because that I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And doing these vlogs, I actually enjoy it, you know, like I, because that's what I consume. If I'm watching YouTube, I'm usually consuming more of a vlog style. Anyway, I'm not watching content of somebody playing basketball. I'm watching like a, a podcast or um, a clip of a podcast, or I'm watching somebody's life. You know what I mean? And so I completely relate with the fact that you're like, no, I enjoy it. I love it. You got to find that kind of niche of being like, this is what I love to do. Yeah, the the heavy production stuff has really died out over the last 10 years or so on YouTube. It used to be all three to five minute YouTube videos that were highly produced, um, you know, had a great storyline, whatever it was. And those were all the big videos that we all saw. And then now, I mean, if I would have gone back and when I first started YouTube and being like, hey, I'm going to do a, a, a video on YouTube where I just go live and I just talk for over an hour, people would be like, that's, that's, that's going to be terrible. No one's going to watch that. And now like what you said, Yuli, like that's what tons of people, you know, turn on yeah. podcasts now. Pod I, podcasts were just not very popular when I was, I don't know about you guys, but you guys listening to podcasts in high school and no, college? Ne never. never. I never consumed content like that. Like I was always a live like sports or move a movie. I never, I didn't know about YouTube until, 
disc golf and until like I had to work in that like Jonas. I never watched any any of that stuff. It's crazy how fast times can change. Um all right, Simon, what next question for you? What is your most watched YouTube video? Easy answer. Scott Stokely. Ooh. Um I was it's titled Playing Disc Golf with a True Legend, I think. <laughs> and that after that correct. video got so successful, if you if you scroll down like right after that, I tried to name a lot of other videos a similar <laughs> title, like with playing disc golf up first and then blah blah blah. Um, because I thought maybe that's the algorithm that everyone talks <laughs> about, like the right <laughs> thumbnail and the perfect title. Yeah, like if you just yeah. get it right, that's um, yeah, that video performed like way out of whack for what my videos usually do. Obviously that, that video has over a million views and I talked to Scott wow. Stokely actually about it. And he was like, yeah, do you know why? And I was like, yeah, I got lucky with the algorithm. Of course. He was like, no, it's cause I'm in it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> nice. yeah YouTube. I, w I wish I could like understand the algorithm. I, I think there's a lot of people that spend way too much time on that. And I think, you know, what you and Yuli have been saying of where it's just like, I'm going to go out, I'm going to make content that I love. I'm going to post it. If it does well, great. If it doesn't, I still had a good time. I think that's how you should really attack yeah. it. Uh, unless you're trying to do it on a business. <clears throat> Obviously, if you're trying to do it on a business, sure. Have a full team, try to figure Algorithm out all the algorithm yeah. stuff. But like, bro, I, I, at the end of the day, it's like some of the stupidest videos you post all of a sudden just has crazy views. And you're like, uh, well, how and it's like it just it got put on something and people clicked no one really understands it or at least i've I never don't. i've <laughs> never had any video in youtube or a reel go viral never one time <laughs> ever bro it's well, so YouTube's like, a lot I, harder now youtube's a yeah, lot harder now yeah or like but the reels are the ones that get me because i'll see like you know, I'll look at like Adam's deal and it'll be like, yeah, on this one, I don't know what happened, but I got like 4 million views. And I'm like, my, my <laughs> most viewed reel is like a hundred thousand and like multiple people, like AB's ace at, at Winthrop on hole seven, mm -hmm. that got 35 million views or something mm -hmm. crazy. And I'm like, how are these people doing it? Like I've posted so many clips, so many reels, so many aces, so many this, so many that, and none of them get like, none of them go viral. I'm waiting for my viral moment. I'm waiting. <laughs> Simon, yeah, Do you ever something? have it where you, yeah, where you post a video and you kind of don't feel great about the video. You think it's fine. It's not your favorite video. It's okay. And posting something is better than posting nothing. So you throw it out there, you're not happy with it. You think the video kind of sucks, but you still post it. And then like years later, I will go back and like rewatch that video. I have a lot of videos that I thought were not very good when back when I posted them. And then two years later, I watched them again. And I think, wow, that was actually not that bad as I remember it. I remember this video being terrible. And then I rewatch it. I'm like, that's kind of watchable. So I kind of like going back sometimes to like remind mm. myself that even when you feel like sometimes you're not doing like the best job, you're not super happy with it. It's probably not as bad as it feels. It might be the exact opposite. I think, I think a lot of my stuff is like Ninja Turtles where I watched Ninja Turtles as a kid. I'm like, this is the sickest movie ever. These guys, <laughs> these guys are awesome. And then I watch it now and I'm like, bro, what is this? Like, it, it's like they, they clearly are in suits. They don't look realistic. Like the fighting scenes are awful. I think that's more my, like what if, if I go back and watch some of the videos that at the time I posted, I was like, this is the sickest thing to ever hit the internet. I'd probably watch it now and be like, eh, this is, this is kind of meh. Um, I have a hard time watching me in anything. <laughs> like that's what I have a hard time yeah, doing. I don't watch, like going, I, I don't watch going, myself. Watching myself. I'm like, dude, you're a total dweeb, bro. Like, what are you doing? Like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't watch myself or hear yourself talk. That's the funniest thing. Like some of those, uh, some of those reels are going around where it's like, he's like talking about any, what he thinks he sounds like. And then he, he records it and listens to it back. And it's like, meh, 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 meh. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've spent far too much time looking at myself and listening to myself talk to where, now it's uh, it's nice that we have Silas, we have Connor, we have a good editing team to where now I can just show up, make the content, and then I don't ever have to 
pay attention <laughs> to it because it's like it's like it's too much, man. I don't know how you guys do it. Maybe 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 they're over it too. I don't know. One more question yeah. for what's your favorite? What's your favorite one that you ever made? Like your absolute favorite that you had maybe you had a blast doing it and let's say it doesn't have the most views, but what was the one where you're like, man, that that was a fun time. I'm glad I did that. Well, probably because you're asking right now, the first videos that come to mind is our pool videos. They were, <laughs> first of all, so fun to make. I mean, the commentary, yeah. I wish we had like the behind the scenes footage of us doing the commentary because we are such idiots just like talking such crap into Did you the microphone. Do and just commentary? Canned. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And we're right. commentating about us in like third person. It's absolutely stupid and ridiculous. <laughs> it is so freaking cringe, but it kind of worked. I think kind of we hit kind of a sweet spot of just being yeah. cringe enough to not be too bad. Um, so even though those videos don't perform very well, I think they're some of my lowest watch videos because it's pool content on my disc golf channel. Obviously yeah. disc golf fans don't want to watch pool. Um, but I think I had the most fun. Obviously, I love playing pool. So playing and editing and doing the voiceovers on those videos was so much fun. But what do I think is my best? What one of the uh, ever things made? that people won't know about, like the last one that we made, is there was a point where it took us thirty minutes to get three sentences in because I just <laughs> kept laughing so hard at what we were trying to say. Yeah. That was ridiculous. I was getting actually angry at you because you just couldn't <laughs> say could that one. You were so convinced that your line was so funny that you had to say it and you couldn't say it for like 20 days. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't even that funny. No, not at all. Um, um, I think this is probably not the right answer, but I'm really bad at answering like questions I didn't prepare for. And I don't, I, I probably, when I rethink this later in bed, I'll be like, why did you answer this? But I made like a, a glitch promo when I made that German uh, glitch video with power grip last year. And the promo video I made for that disc, I was pretty stoked with because I found a really good track, like good music for it. And it just lined up perfectly. And, I got to be creative with some editing stuff and I was pretty proud of that video on how it turned out. Um, probably not the right answer, but that just pops to mind right now.